Welcome to another episode of the Down Under Stormtrooper. Today I'm going to be fiberglassing the inside of the Stormtrooper helmet. Uh, I want to be able to do that in order to make the helmet a lot stronger. It is after all only PLA plastic at the moment, so um, it does have the external UV resin that is making it stronger as well, but I want to be able to make sure that the, um, the bucket itself is quite strong. I got some inspiration from one of my 501st First Legion friends, Fernando, who um, created this helmet for the Hunter Hornet squad. So um, often for a lot of our troops and events that we go to, we'll take a speeder bike vehicle with us and the kids can jump on the, the speeder bike and get photos taken. And to complete their experience, we um, give them this Mandalorian helmet to, to wear. And Fernando, when he built this helmet, um, he fiberglassed the inside of the helmet. So this is a, a 3D printed, Mandalorian helmet. Um, it looks amazing. Um, but yeah, just to make sure that the helmet was nice and strong, he has fiberglass the inside. So I'll just bring that up to the camera just so you can see what that looks like on the inside. So um, I've taken some inspiration from Fernando and I want to um, fiberglass the, um, the inside of the helmet, give it that strength. And I'm also going to be using the same technique for the rest of the armor. All right, let's get started. So I've picked up a fiberglass kit from, um, from my local Bunnings. Um, it has everything you pretty much need in it. It's just over $50 to buy, uh, Australian of course. You get one metre square of the fiberglass sheeting, a small measuring cup, a throwaway brush, uh, and a stirring stick, the gloves, and you get the hardener for the resin and the fiberglass resin itself. So that's a kilo of the fiberglass resin. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is just cutting up the sheets to make them um, a little bit more manageable in size. So when I cut this up, I really just want fairly small squares to be able to put inside the helmet to make it a little bit more manageable. You can't do one large piece at a time uh, because the, the fiberglass doesn't really contour particularly well to, to curves and, um, and, and strange shapes. And there's quite a few, there's quite a few different curves to be able to go through with this helmet so just using small squares will, um, will certainly help with that. So you may notice that today I'm filming outside, so I hope the audio isn't too bad. I've got lots of dogs barking. You can probably hear the, the magpies and the occasional cockatoo go over. Uh, so I'm hoping it's not too noisy. It's also Easter Friday here today, so it's a public holiday. And so I've got lots of noise from, um, from the, the neighborhood. So fingers crossed you're not picking up too much of that on the microphones. So just to explain the process a little bit, um, what I'll be doing is initially fraying the sheets of the, the fiberglass. And then when I lay them down into the helmet, I'll be first putting a, a, a layer of resin down first and then placing the matting down and then just dabbing resin over the top of it. So I won't be brushing it, just be dabbing that. So that way that will saturate the, the matting really well and it'll also get rid of the bubbles that are inside the, um, underneath the sheet. So I'll keep doing that and then I can then lay down and I want about a, a two to three centimeter overlap on the next sheet and then I will continue to, to dab that down with some more resin. So here's the resin and I'm about to mix that up. So every 100 ml of resin, I need to put in about 62 drops of the hardener. So it's, it's essentially one and a half ml of hardener to 100 ml of the, um, the resin. So it's not a particularly warm day here. It's not cold, it's, it's autumn here in Australia. So um, I'm gonna just put in the, the, the one and a half ml of hardener. If it was a cold day, then I'd probably put in a little bit more of that. Thank you. 
Now, I hope you can hear me through the respirator. It's really important that when you're working with fiberglass and this resin, that you're in a well-ventilated area um, and you are using the right safety equipment. I did hear a, a pretty horrific story from a, an employee at Bunnings that told me that they, um, they no longer keep the hardener component for the, the fiberglass out in the public area. It's always behind the, the counter now. And that's because somebody um, somehow managed to get the hardener in their eyes and they went, they went blind from it. So it's stuff that you don't want to trifle with. Uh, so make sure you, you use the right precautions. I'm going to be giving this a good mix for, um, for, for a minute or so. And then I've got about a, a 30 minute working time with this. So I'm only doing small amounts at a time. This cup here is only made up about 52 mil of resin. So uh, I'd much rather have to make more up than to, to waste some. I was hoping to have my plastic uh, cups ready for, um, for today, but unfortunately they didn't arrive yet. Um, so I'm hoping that the doubled paper cups will survive today. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a good layer of resin down as a base layer here. So just fraying out the edges of the matting a little bit. And starting from the middle, just dabbing the resin in. So as I go, I'm just working, dabbing through and working those bubbles out of the mat. Okay, now I'm ready for my next piece. And I want to make sure I've got about two to three centimeters of overlap. And you can see having the smaller matting will help with the sheeting to, to contour to the curves of the helmet. So what I'm going to do now with the rest of the resin is just pat down the, um, 
the inside of the helmet a little bit. I can see some loose fibers there, so I just want to try and pat those down, get those to, to stick into the, um, the helmet more, and that'll reduce any cleanup uh, that I have to do, or the amount of cleanup I've got to do afterwards. I will be doing a bit of a sand of the, the helmet once the, um, the resin has cured and the fiberglass is all, all um, fixed now, um, mainly because I don't really want to have any glass fibers sticking into my head especially near the eye sockets. I want to make sure that uh, that's nice and clear there. I don't want to risk uh, putting some glass in my eye. Okay, so that's the fiberglass matting laid down now, the laminate on the inside of the helmet. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just let that cure for a little while. I'm going to come back and check it in about half an hour or so. I should hopefully be in a position there where I can go through with a, a knife and just trim some of the edges here. So um, I believe that while the resin is still a little bit tacky and a little bit, um, uh, well, hasn't cured and hardened completely, you can get a knife in there and do some initial cleanup. So I'm hoping to do that. Otherwise, it uh, requires some harder tool to, um, to clean up afterwards. So that's my plan. Um, I'll come back in an hour. It's been an hour now, so I am going to attempt to just clean off the edges for the, um, the fiberglass sheeting here. I'll just give you a bit of a close up so you can see what I'm talking about. So I am just using my knife here. I can see that the resin still feels a little bit pliable, um, so it's not rock hard yet. <laughs> a little bit around the eye sockets here that I want to clean up as well. So there's obviously still a few strands that, um, that are on the edges there, but I'll be able to sand those off after this is all dried. So I'm now going to leave this for a day and let this cure completely. Day two now, the resin has had overnight to cure and harden. It's looking really good. Um, what I'm going to do is just spend a bit of time with some 80 grit sandpaper just to get rid of some of the fibres. Uh, the last thing I want is while I'm wearing the helmet is to have glass fibres sticking into my head, especially around the eye sockets. I want to make sure that that's nice and clear um, and there's not going to be any sharp pieces of uh, matting still sticking out. So I'm going to be wearing a, a respirator. It's probably a little bit overkill. I could probably just use a dust mask just to protect myself from any glass fibers that are, um, are going to get in the sanding. Um, I'm going to be wearing eye protection and also some gloves just to try and give myself a little bit of um, protection for, um, from those shards. Sanding's all done now. Now the purpose of that was not really about the surface finish. It was really just to try and get rid of any sharp edges that might be inside the helmet from the, the fiberglass, getting rid of those, those loose strands. The, um, the fiberglass is pretty brutal on the, um, the sandpaper, so you're gonna go through a fair bit, and it's kind of brutal on the gloves too, so um, make sure you're fairly careful with that as well if you can. Some lessons learned from the fiberglassing effort yesterday. Um, as I mentioned, this was my first go at fiberglassing. I think the first thing was um, it'd be great to have larger measuring cups. Uh, I think I mentioned that I was waiting for an order to arrive from Amazon, but it hadn't arrived yet. Uh, and that was some proper uh, larger size measuring cups. So I was only really making do with those small cups that I use for the UV resin. Um, it still worked, but uh, it was a little bit painful. I had to make up quite a few batches of the resin. So the hardest part of the helmet was the ears. And that was because I was using those larger sheets and they just don't like to conform to the, the curves and the sharp bends that are, are there. So what I think I would be doing next time is making sure that I've got um, a mix of the, the larger square sheets to, to use, but also I think a handful of really small strips. I found when I was doing around the inside here that the smaller sheets, you might have seen that I swapped over to using smaller sheets, they conformed really well to the curve and they're a lot easier to, um, to manage. And especially around the front here near the teeth, 
I use the smaller sheets as well and um, it worked really well. So that's probably something to learn. The other thing that I wasn't quite prepared for was how messy the process was. Kind of makes sense, the resin is, is curing on you and um, as it gets towards the end of that, it gets quite sticky. But you end up getting fiberglass fibers all over your gloves. So that was just something that I found was a little bit difficult to manage um, and everything I touched felt like it had um, resin on it or I was putting resin on it. And you can see here, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work on the, the front of the, the bucket because I managed to get some resin poured onto it. Um, should sand off okay, so I'm not too concerned about it, but still it was quite difficult to, to manage probably also because of the type of project this is it's a little bit of an awkward project to, to do fiberglassing in i think once i start working on the armor it's going to be a lot easier to manage it's added a fair bit of weight so some people might not like that so that's just something to be aware of as well is that uh, you know we've got pla plastic uv resin and then the fiberglass there as well so it could be a, end up being a costume that is a little bit uncomfortable to wear for really long periods of time but i guess the goal was achieved it's a, a much stronger piece now and uh, it should definitely um, survive any wear and tear through troops now so there we have it uh, the inside of the stormtrooper helmet is now fiberglassed so again, thank you for joining. I hope you found this video beneficial. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. And may those costuming gods be with you.